Welcome to Right Way Ministries. For the next 30 minutes, you will learn God's Word and what He requires of you. And now, here is your speaker, Gilbert Vincent. Praise the name of the Lord. Grace be with you out there in peace from God the Father, from Jesus His Son, and from the seven spirits that are burning brightly before His throne as I now speak. I want you to stay tuned with us because we're going to be tearing down things that are contrary to the word of the living God. And it's necessary for you to receive these things into your heart and soul so that you might be strong and be able to make it through the time of trouble coming upon the earth. That there has not been since there was a nation, neither shall be after it. You've got to be strong to go through that. And you won't if you don't ask God for help. And I'm here out of fear of God to help you because I'm going to tell you what he says, and what he says will help you. If you follow instructions, you'll make it out of here alive. And it, without his instruction, if you despise instruction, the Bible says you love death. If you don't want to die and go to hell, if you want to make it out of here alive, you've got to receive the instructions from the Holy Scriptures. But you won't receive anything spiritually unless you go up to the throne of the living God, the Father of Spirits, and ask him to pour out of his spirit upon you to make you to understand the reading. So either change the channel or join me in prayer right now because he said, with two or more gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. I want the Lord to be right here and I want him to break the bread down and give it to you and multiply it unto you. Increase your learning right now. And he'll do that if we ask. That's why he instructed us to pray. He said, when you pray, say, our Father. So let's get together and pray to our Father in heaven for help right now. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, our Lord and our God, Master, in the name of your Son, Jesus, we ask you to pour out abundantly, Father, upon you, us, of your Holy Spirit. Make known these holy scriptures unto us. Lead and guide us into all truth. In fear of you, we worship towards your holy temple in heaven. We desire mercies of the living God. Show us right now your will. Put it on our hearts. We'll give you all the praise, the honor, the glory, and the thanks. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, today, the Bible says there's a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. There's a time for every purpose under heaven. Well, a lot of evil things have been planted by the evil one. He sows tares among the wheat. And right now, before the end of time, it's time to pluck that up. The Bible says you're supposed to cut down everything that it exalts itself against the word of the living God, the knowledge of God. You won't even get knowledge without the fear of the Lord. That's why I always, it's the first thing I preach is the fear of the Lord because that's the principal thing, first thing. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You don't even begin to know anything until you fear God. So you've got to acknowledge that the Lord is greatly to be feared and that he created all things for his pleasure, not our pleasure. And if you want to be pleased, you have to do his will. And what you sow, you reap, you'll be pleased. Because that's joy unspeakable and full of glory when you do the Lord's will, when you please him. What pleases him? It pleases him by the foolishness of having to preach the fear of the Lord to you that men be saved. That pleases God. But if that pleases him, that's what I want to do. That's the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. And that pleases him, do it and you'll prosper. Well, what we want to tear down today is this false doctrine. It's the well, number one doctrine. And the Bible says, you know, from the beginning to the end, this proves it. But the number one doctrine among churches today, Christian, so-called Christian churches, is eternal security. My brother, you got eternal security. You're eternally secure. This preacher, I'm going to show to you out of the scriptures that it began up in heaven because Lucifer was made without fear of God. And therefore, he preached it to one-third of the angels. And I'm going to go through the scriptures, and because of that, this universe was created, not so that you'd have eternal security, but that you'd fear God and make it into eternity. You don't have eternal security until you're secured into eternity. And then you've got it made. Not until then. The very least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than anybody that hears my voice right now on earth because they're there. They got it made. They can't get kicked out. 
But anybody who hears my voice, you haven't made it yet. You haven't crossed over, Jordan. You have to continue in well-doing. And you have to continue. You got to work and perfect holiness in the fear of God. No works, faith without works is dead. You're dead. You ain't going to make it. You got to be alive to make it. You got to keep going. You got to be quickened by the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, one of the seven spirits before the throne of the living God. And you need all seven spirits to be like Jesus because Jesus is the way out of here alive. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Well, before this universe was even created, I'm going to quote a scripture. It's in the book of Job, and it's God Almighty talking. And it's chapter 41 of Job, verse 33. And in it, God speaking to Job, he says, Upon earth there is none his like who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things, He's a king over all the children of pride. So Lucifer was made without fear. He's very high-minded. The Bible says, be not high-minded, but fear. But he didn't. So he went to one-third of the angels up in heaven and said, look, it, you've got eternal security. You're in eternity. But we don't have to fear God. We don't have to do what he says. If I was in charge, things would be different. You have nothing to fear. you got eternal security. Well, now, those one-third of the angels followed him. They left their first estate. They had estates. They had mansions up there. They left it. Now they're in chains to darkness. Can't repent. No eternal security for them, poor devils, is there. They can't get back to heaven. They're out forever. And if you keep the fear of the Lord, it will keep you, and you'll move into their vacancies. But without it, you're lost. So Satan saw that he was cast down into this new earth that God created because darkness was upon the face of the earth. He's the prince of darkness. So he went to the first couple that was instructed by God to fear him not to touch that fruit of knowledge of good and evil. Don't touch it lest you die. Don't eat it. And that's, that was the only instruction that they needed to do. Everything, they were good to go on everything else. The only thing was not to do with that. And the fear of God was there because the woman said, hey, no, we can't do it. She knew that. But Satan disarmed the woman by taking away the fear of God. First thing he did was to sow doubt that this really was the word of God that a husband told her. This is really the word of God. Because a husband was told by God, don't eat of it, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then when he saw he didn't have any friends, so he made the woman to be a help meet and so Satan went after the weaker of the two vessels. He went after the woman. And I'm reading out of the third chapter of Genesis, verse, well, very first thing, verse 1, Satan says, and this is the first voice of Satan, and the first recorded words is sowing doubt in the word of God. Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? That's his first his first words were a question, a doubt to sow to the woman. And the same thing to you. Oh, did God really say that in the Bible? Can you really trust what that character on TV is reading out of? His word's going to abide forever. You can trust it. Heaven and earth, all flesh is going down, but this word that I preach to you is going to last forever because God spoke it. He said it, and it's settled. It's already settled. It's gonna, he's going to fulfill all his pleasure because he created all things for his, his pleasure, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everything was created for God's pleasure. So he's going to fulfill all his pleasure. So here's Satan sowing down. The woman said, no, we can't eat of it. You know, there's a little fear of God there. He had to take away the fear of God. Verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. You don't have to fear God. You're not going to die. you got eternal security. You don't think God would kill you. God is love. He, you're eternally secure. God gave you all things. He's a good God. He wouldn't. You don't think God would kill you, do you? If you don't think he would, check out a graveyard, okay? People are dying like crazy. And it's because God's word stands and their words cease. My words, I'll cease. Let every man be a liar. I can lie to you. But if I'm quoting the word of God, I'm letting God be true to you. And out of his word, he's saying that Satan came to the woman preaching eternal security. What happened? She did, didn't she? 
And it's the same. Now he's coming to you. He said, oh, once you're born again, oh, thou shalt not surely die. You've got eternal security. Well, I'm going to read to you out of, out of the scriptures how God, having saved the children of Israel out of Egypt, delivered them from bondage, took them out of the most powerful nation on earth, freed them, destroyed them in the wilderness. Doesn't sound too secure to me. Only two of them, Joshua and Caleb, made it in. The rest of them didn't make it. Didn't make it. They're, they're, they're still in the desert. Their, their bodies are still in the desert, part of the desert. You want to make it into heaven? You got to deny yourself, and you got to, in fear of God, follow instructions, or you'll preach eternal security to you. You'll tell others, oh, no, no, I've got it made. Well, here Paul, the apostle, wrote 85% of the epistles. He laid them more abundantly than all the apostles. And in proof is in the pudding. You can just read his epistles and see that they're more abundant. And he says, I don't count myself to already attain. But yet all these ministers say, oh, I've already attained. I've got eternal security, and you can have it too if you tithe to my word and receive my teachings and buy my tapes. My tapes aren't for sale. They're free, okay? Freely I receive, freely I give. Because I know the Lord is merciful. He freely showed me. And whenever he shows you something, it's not supposed to be kept secret. It's supposed to come abroad. So I'm getting it out to you. What you do with it is your problem. You can, you can receive it and be stronger and, and be more of fear of God and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, or you can just choose to reject it and gamble. But I'm just going to tell you what the Word of God says. Well, God was talking to Moses, in, and it, when he brought him out, he's on the mount, he gave him the Ten Commandments, and yet God had showed him what he wanted. Now, here's God, Almighty, created every atom, and here's this little man, Moses, on top of this mountain in a desert tribe place. And here God lets his feelings out to Moses when he's talking. He talked to him as a man talking to his friend, even thus, mouth to mouth. So he's to talking to Moses. And normally, you know, when you're talking to somebody that's under you, you don't let them know how you feel. They say, hey, look, take care of this. Go ahead. I want you to pick up this. I want you to go deliver this. Just go ahead and do it, Okay. You don't let them know, hey, man, I'm really having a hard time. I really wish you'd help me or something. No. You don't tell them that. You pay them. You get the job done, and that's, that's it. That's your duty. The Bible says, what is your duty? The Bible says the whole duty of man is to fear God and do what he says. Respond. One third of the angels didn't. They didn't keep their place before God. Now they change the darkness. They can't repent. You've got to keep your place. So he's speaking to Moses, chapter 5 of Deuteronomy, verse 9, and he he lets his feelings out. He just lets it out. He says, oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. You want to get some eternal security? Fear God and keep his commandments always so it'd be good, it'll be good for you and your children forever. But the people, the covenant that uh, he made with Moses... The children of Israel that came out of uh, Egypt, they broke that covenant. They didn't keep why? Because they didn't, they didn't have a heart to fear God. And that's what he wanted. He didn't tell them they were eternally secure. He told them, no, no, you got to have a heart to fear me. And if you do, it'll be well with you forever. Well, it says in Jeremiah, he spoke to Jeremiah hundreds of years later, Jeremiah the prophet, and he spoke to him in chapter 31 of uh, Jeremiah, verse 31, said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was as an husband unto them, saith the Lord. In other words, he was like a husband and they were my wife, and they broke. They didn't keep their place. They didn't keep the covenant I made with them. Verse 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I'll put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So he's going to make a new covenant with the people. Well, what's this covenant like? Turn to chapter 32 of Jeremiah, the very next chapter, verse 38. And he says there, and he's speaking in the spirit to Jeremiah. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart, 
and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. And I'll make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. So if he doesn't put his fear in your heart, he doesn't have a covenant with you. He said, I'm going to make a new covenant. I'm going to give you one heart to fear me forever. I'm going to put my fear in your heart. I'll never leave you or forsake you, but I'm going to put my fear in your heart so that you don't forsake me. Now, if you don't have my fear in your heart, you will forsake me and break the covenant. The covenant's null and void, no eternal security. You have to keep my covenant to fear me and do what I say. And that's your whole duty. And if you do do that duty, you'll get up in heaven and say, we're unprofitable servants. We did that which was our duty to do. We just followed instructions. Well, come on in. Thou good and faithful servant, you followed instructions. Well, that's what the Lord wants you to do. And that's what Abraham, the father of faith, did. He did whatsoever God commanded him. Because Jesus, speaking, Jesus is the word of God. And in Je the gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 14, Jesus lets you know who is his friend and who is his enemy. He says in 14, ye are my friends if, you do whatsoever I command you. Of course, you get all these ministers on, on TV and radio say, so, oh, unconditional love. There's no conditions. No, he says, if. That's the condition. You do whatsoever I command you, you're my friend. Now, Abraham did whatsoever God commanded him. He said, go off, don't put your son and daughter before me. Grab your only begotten son, put him up on the altar. I'll tell you where. But do what I say. He did whatsoever he commanded. And he was called the friend of God. You want to be a friend of God? Do whatever he says. When the Gospel of Luke, Jesus comes to him in Luke chapter 12, verse 5, and he says, verse 4, this is Jesus speaking in the Spirit. He says, and I say unto you, my friends, who are his friends? The ones that do whatsoever he commands. Whatever, whatever, you, whatever I tell you to do, do it, you're my friend. Well, okay, the ones that are doing whatsoever I tell, Man, you guys are say born again Christians. You're doing whatsoever I tell you. I say to you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more they can do. My friends, don't be afraid of them. But I, Jesus, will forewarn you, the ones that do whatsoever I command, whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Hell, yea, I say unto you, fear him. So here's Jesus telling you, you know, you characters are doing real good. You're doing whatever I say. I'm, you're my friend. I'm warning you who to fear. Fear him who can cast you in hell. Now, if you got eternal security, why is he warning you to fear him who can throw you in hell if you don't fear him? He's warning you because that's what the gospel is, warning every man and teaching every man in what? In all wisdom, the fear of God. Because that's what wisdom is, the fear of the Lord. And that's the whole duty of man. And that doesn't leave any space for eternal security. Now, there is no eternal security until you're secured into eternity. Now, people, there's only one Baptist that I know of in the Bible that is called a Baptist, and he's St. John. And the gospel, same gospel, now Luke, a little earlier, chapter 3, beginning at verse 7, it tells you what John the Baptist preached. Now, he didn't preach any eternal security. He was letting you know exactly the way it was. And Jesus lets you know that even John didn't have eternal security, okay? But John said in chapter 3, verse 7, then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. So here are these people, they're coming down to the altar. John, you think John let up on them? No, he said, you bunch of snakes, unrepentant people, don't even have a need to repent on. It's not really in you to do this. With men, it's impossible. You better get a hold of God. Proof is in the pudding. You better fear God. Who hath warned you? Is this really you coming forth in the fear of God? Is this the spirit of the fear of the Lord coming down on you, leading you to repentance? Are you doing it for a show? You just want to be accepted with the people. 
No, you better fear God, get a hold of God. Don't worry about what anybody thinks. Next verse. Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance. And begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. Abraham was a friend of God. He did whatever he commanded, and we have him as our father. Don't begin to say that. For I say unto you that God is able these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You be thrust out, and these children be raised up to Abraham. Verse 9. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, every tree now, that's Baptist trees, Lutheran tree, any kind of tree. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit, hewn down and cast into the fire. So that doesn't sound too secure to me if you don't bring forth good fruit. You've got to bring forth fruit and meet for repentance. It shows you meet the criteria for repentance because you preach the same, he that heareth speaketh constantly and remains constant. You've got to fear God. Well, that's what John was preaching. But, you know, John later on in, in the epistle, in the gospel of Jesus, he began to waver. He said, uh, art thou really he that should come? Uh, look we for another. And Jesus had to send back. He sold John, actually sold doubt in his followers by saying, go and ask him again. Art thou really he that should come? Or look we for another. John had already proclaimed, thou art the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. You're the one. You're the man. That's it. But now when he's in jail, about to lose his head. And they're sharpening that axe out there. And he's going to lose his head. He said, man, the axe laid the root of every tree. I want to make sure. Uh, art thou really he that should come? Or do I look for another? I mean, if you're the one, I'm your main man. I came before you. Prepared the way. I'm a good prep man. Spring me out of here. If you're the one, or do I look for another to spring me? You know, Jesus sent back encouraging words to John. He said, the dead are raised out here. Go show John again. So what if you lose your head? for the, I'm raising the dead out here. He said, the poor of the gospel preach. I'm not charging them $29.95 for my tapes. It's free. The poor have the gospel preach. And Jesus ended his encouragement to John by saying, and blessed is he, whosoever is not offended at me. I'm saying the same thing to you today. Don't be offended at this, the word of God. There's no eternal security till you're secured into eternity. You have to keep your body under and bring it into subjection, lest after you preach to others, you be a castaway. You will be cast away in the outer darkness if you don't, in fear of God, preach the same thing constant. Straight as the way, straight out of the scriptures. Don't get deceived. Because Jesus, hey, there hasn't risen a greater born of women. Than John the Baptist. Now you got three fourths of the old Bible full of godly men. There's a reason a greater than John. Nevertheless, Jesus said, He that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. Why? The very least one in it, God had made. He's in heaven. That's why he's there. He's eternally secure. But John's wavering over in jail right now. He ain't got it made yet. I got to go encourage him again, I got to show him again. I got to reprove them. Why? Because reproofs of instruction are the way of life. You want to get out of here alive? You got to hear characters like me tell you again what the Word of God says, and again, and again, because God knows that we're but dust, pretty dumb. Are we like sheep go astray? And so He, had, the words of the wise were as goads, like a sharp pointed stick to poke you and get you going in that straight and narrow way. Because if you don't, if you don't stay in that straight and narrow way. I stay in the straight and narrow way for fear of the Lord because he means business. He says what he means and means what he says. And if you don't do it, well, then you're tempting God. And Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't tempt him. In fear of him, worship toward his holy temple. Heaven. Look up and rejoice. Your redemption draweth nigh, but you've got to keep your body under. Now, Paul, reading to the Philippians, where he was jailed and shamefully entreated at Philippi, he wrote unto him, he said, chapter, and I want you to read this, chapter 2 of Philippians, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, remember, if you do whatsoever I command you, you're my friends, and if you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and do of his good pleasure. Now, if you're doing all things in fear and trembling, then, yeah, yeah, it's obvious God's working through you. 
But if you don't fear God and tremble at his word, he can't work through you. He's not working through you. But if you work it out, I mean, you know, break a sweat, work out your own salvation, faith without works is dead. You got to work it out. Well, then he's working through you. He'll use you. He'll work in you. Now, Paul says, next, very next chapter, chapter 3, verse 11. This is Paul, the apostle now, who labored more abundantly than all of them. Even Peter said, hey, don't wrestle with what Paul says as they do the other scriptures. What he says is scriptures. It's the word of God. Don't wrestle with it. Just do what he says. He rebuked me and I had to listen. So listen to what Paul's saying right now. Verse 11. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Anyway, man, I just want to make it out of here alive, Paul says. Verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already a perfect. So Paul hadn't attained. He doesn't have eternal security yet. But I follow after. If that I may apprehend that, for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Hey, I'm a prisoner of Christ. I got appreh I, I, I was apprehended by Christ to obtain eternal life. So I'm following after that I may apprehend it, that God can work through me to apprehend eternal life, the goal set before me. Verse 13, brethren, he's talking, y'all brothers? Okay, he's talking to you. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Any one of you characters out there wrote more Bible than Paul? He says he hadn't apprehended, okay? But this one thing I do, one thing now, forgetting those things that are behind and press, reaching forth into those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God, of God in Christ Jesus. So this is what Paul said. And you do well. He says, follow us as we follow the Lord. As an example, use that example. Brethren, don't be deceived. Satan wants to lull you and flatter you so you're eternally secure. You got eternal security, no big thing. You don't have to fear God. You got eternal security. No, don't judge before the time. Endure, he that endureth to the end, the same. Jesus said, now do this or else. He, he warned the churches. If you're in a church, he warns you. Do this or else I'll blot you out of my book of life. You had to be written in to be blotted out. Or I'll move your candlestick out of his place. You had to be in place to be moved out. Or he says, lest I spew you out of my mouth. You had to be in the body of Christ to be spit out. So do it or else. These, these are the scriptures of the living God pleading with you. Don't be deceived by the flattery of the tongue of the Antichrist and of all the false churches that go back to her. Protest and stand by the word of the in fear of God. Because the fear of man bringeth a snare. Don't fear what man will think of you. Fear what God will think of you, but you don't do what he says. And he says, fear him. Your whole duty is to fear him. If you doubt anything I'm saying, the scriptures are here. You call that 800 number, 850-7448, anytime. We'll be ready to answer you with meekness and fear, okay? Because we fear God. We'll tell you, hey, no, it's really in there. We didn't make it up. And tune in next week, Lord willing, weather permit, and we'll be alive and preach to you again the fear of the Lord. Until next time, praise the name of the Lord. If you would like to communicate with this ministry, write to Right Way Ministries at Post Office Box 305, Mansfield, Texas, 76063. That's Right Way Ministries, Post Office Box 305, Mansfield, Texas, 76063. Or you can call toll-free at 1-800-850-7448. That's 1-800-850-7448. Remember, those that feared the Lord spake often one to another.